there's no question that uh, stimulus in the United States is a is you know, presents a very favorable backdrop for the growth projections that we've made uh, in in the in the in, in yesterday's uh, outlook. That spills over to uh, uh, all all sorts of U.S. trading partners uh, in in different in different manners and in different scales. There's actually a chapter that, we're, that we've released that, um, that actually discusses spillovers in particular. I wouldn't characterize it as a crutch. Um, this, is a, this is a tailwind, right, that countries should be able to use or capitalize on uh, to try and ride through the remaining amount of time until they can get all their, uh, all their citizens jabbed and their economies reopened. It also gives them the time uh, over the next uh, few months to get their uh, uh, recovery plans in order and make sure that they come out of this uh, riding the momentum into a, into a growth path that helps them recover fully from the crisis. Well, most advanced economies are set to accelerate growth-wise in the second half of the year, and there's even talk of some economies overheating. Do you think there's a risk of policymakers and specifically central banks keeping too much accommodation at the risk of creating overheating economies further down the tracks? Every economy is in a different position uh, today. And you know, we have 190 members uh, as, part of our, as part of our role. We engage with each of them to figure out exactly where they are in this crisis and what policy is appropriate for this particular juncture. Uh, the, um, but you're right. When you uh, both on fiscal and monetary policy, uh, mo monetary policy posture, keeping accommodation in place for too long does invite risks. On the monetary policy side, uh, keeping rates uh, or monetary policy accommodation in place for too long does invite certain vulnerabilities to to come into the financial sector. Uh, we've reinforced in our uh, uh, GFSR that it is, it is prudent for, for regulators to monitor for these risks and contain them as they see them. On the fiscal side, uh, you know, just because rates are low, uh, remain low, and, uh, and your borrowing capacity is there, doesn't mean you can borrow unlimited amounts of money for any purpose. We want people to spend uh, resources prudently, both to get through the pandemic and to make the proper investments to uh, set themselves on a growth trajectory coming out of the crisis, but that requires being very selective and making sure that you're funding the projects with the highest economic rates of return. Uh, and, and uh, you know, not, not doing that or, you know, not, not in, uh, employing that kind of prudence does invite a debt overhang, right? And both the debt overhang or the financial vulnerabilities could invite risks to growth uh, over the medium term. 